So hello, Elshad. This is your first time coming to my podcast. And uh, similar to other events, we have five questions for you. I would uh, first ask you to introduce yourself a bit. Oh, thank you very much, Paul. Thank you for inviting for your podcast. So my name is Elshad. I'm a project manager. I have been in project management for more than six years. And I'm also an author of this book called uh, Project Management's Guide to Life Success. I love project management and, well, and today we're going to also discuss project management. So I'm very excited. Could you describe project management? Because uh, some people are too shy to ask what exactly it is. And describe what is project management? So it's a very good question. Uh, many people actually ask me, what is project management? Uh, but in order to explain what it is, um, I have to go like to the very beginning and explain you what is a project. So what's a project? Project, it's a temporary effort um, that has beginning and an end uh, aimed at creating a unique product service or result so this is a project okay. so what's project management so project management overall like let's say like in simple words is all about planning organizing and overseeing tasks what project managers do so project manager in simple words is a person who is responsible making sure that the goals of the projects are met, they're achieved, and the project, like end result of the project is delivered within the scope, budget, and time frame. It sounds easy, but it's quite hard when you're working with like in a team with probably like 10, 15, 20, or even like 100 people. Oh. Yeah, it's very challenging. So nowadays, uh, it's very popular uh, to have a project manager who separately manages the projects and makes sure he connects all the people in the team, like developers, business analysts, UX designers, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. To be organized and uh, to plan be very detailed because I once asked uh, a Japanese young man at uh, Mundolingo, it's about uh, various languages um, event, and I asked, what's, what's his secret? What's the secret of his country that makes them the most advanced, technolo the most technologically advanced country in the world? And he told me that being extremely meticulous and detailed, very organized, that is what making, what's making them go forward farther than others. And it's, it's very true when you just give a proper management, especially the project. So you mentioned two techniques that you have, um, that you're going to tell us regarding project management. As I understand, techniques that uh, will help you manage the project. Could you tell us about them? Sure. Um, so there are two methodologies, um, main methodologies that are used nowadays. Uh, first approach, it's waterfall approach. It's a phased approach, and um, in this case, in this scenario, project managers know what comes next. And what I mean by that, um, for example, we have phase one, we're building a house, and we have phase two, we're doing decorations, we're doing uh, some work in the kitchen, or we're installing a bathtub in the washroom. We cannot do the decorations before we build the house. We need to build the house first, phase one, and after that we move to phase two. And everybody knows about it. So this is a waterfall approach. It's a linear approach. You know what to expect. And you can make your predictions regarding like pricing, you know, how much it's going to cost, like looking at like historical data. For example, last year we built a house and it was like, Half million dollars. This year we're building a house. Maybe if we count the inflation, it's gonna be around the same price, like 
500,000 or around $600,000. I think for Toronto, that's actually a significantly good price. <laughs> yeah, well, it's just an example, of course. Well, Toronto is like very expensive now with uh, all the inflation and economic situation and everything what's going on. And uh, also you mentioned um, um, about the second one. So second methodology, it's agile methodology. It's a little bit different from the waterfall approach. Uh, it's more uh, iterative. It's not phased approach. And it's mainly used in software development. For example, a project manager working with a client and UX designer made a template. Uh, and the client doesn't like um, the button in the right uh, top corner. And he wants to change it and push it down to make it like from the left, bottom side. And we have to make that change. So agile methodology really depends and focused on customer uh, customers like um, feedback and involves lots of adaptations and flexibility, both from the team and the customer. So it's very agile, always changing, and you cannot predict it as you can predict, predict for example, waterfall. And these are the two um, methodologies. And also, like earlier, you mentioned about like uh, Japan. Uh, I used to live in Japan for two years. Oh, really? Almost, yeah. And um, I was studying Japanese business uh, management. And uh, we learned about a Kaizen methodology. It, it means like continuous improvements, like tiny continuous improvements. So uh, what that methodology uh, talks about and advises people, you don't have to make like a big steps, big innovations and change your behavior much. Just be a little bit better every day, a little bit. And at the end of the day, in one year, two years, three years, you're going to be like a totally different person. Same applies to the techniques you use. If you're going to ameliorate your techniques, like you're going to be more productive in the long run. What you mentioned about uh, being a little bit better every day, it reminds me of the book I once read called Atomic Habits. I think it's a very brilliant, brilliant book and it mathemat mathematically describes that if you improve just by 1% every day for one year, in one year, you're going to improve by 3,778%. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. Yep. Yes. So once again, what are your te uh, the techniques that you named are called? Waterfall and the second one? Waterfall, Agile... And separately, I just mentioned uh, Kaizen Improvement Technique. And that was simply to tell us about your book. Oh, okay. So you can show your book and yeah, just so this is give a short summary. my book. So it's about project management. It's about project management and uh, how one can use project management techniques that are used in the professional environment in everyday life. You know... Um, what happens, like we're really good when we go to work, we put our best at work. We do, we work nonstop and we're like trying to achieve those goals. Like we have our KPIs, we want to, them to be really high. We want to overperform. But when we come back home, we're not putting enough effort in order to achieve our personal goals, right? And I thought, why not use those techniques that we use at work, but at home, you know? Like, with the simple tasks as, for example, washing dishes or doing laundry. So I'll give you an example. Uh, there's a technique um, method uh, created by an Italian guy called Pomodoro Technique. And it's very simple. Um, how to make sure that you are focusing on your tasks and uh, complete your task without being uh, distracted. So you put 25 minutes countdown on your uh, phone and you just concentrate on your task without any distractions. You turn on off, like you put your phone on a, like silent mode 
and just focus on the tasks, only washing dishes. And after 25 minutes, you probably finish like all your dishes, right? And you make a five minute like um, Recess. break. Yeah, <laughs> you just take a break for five minutes. Then you put another countdown for 25 minutes and you're, for example, vacuuming uh, first and the second floor. And after that, again, you have like a five minutes um, break and you do another Pomodoro of 25 minutes, but you do a different thing. For example, um, working on your own project, for example, your own podcast, you're editing your own podcast, but mm-hmm. again, without any distractions. And it works like a miracle. Like, honestly, I wrote this book using this technique. After work, uh, after five, I was just sitting, putting those countdowns one by one and just concentrated working and writing my book. And, you know, this is the result. I can see it worked. Yep, 212 pages. It uh, reminds me of the little mistake that a lot of people today are making, and that's multitasking. One of the books called The Brain That Changes Itself, but by Norman Dodge, I believe, Dr. Norman Dodge. (laughs) He mentions how the brain is incapable of doing two tasks at once. No matter how much people try to do it, they they just can't. When two people try to do two tasks at the same time, it's like taking a photo from the left and photo from the right. You don't do it at the same time. You just quickly switch from one activity to another. You can be very quick at it, but it's not going to be able to do two tasks at once. Yep. Uh, I agree with you. And uh, actually, when I was passing my uh, project management certification, uh, in one of those chapters uh, in that project management guide, it was written that when you switch from one project to another and you have like several projects, uh, it actually diminishes your productivity. Mm. It decreases your productivity. And... um, It's also sort of multitasking because you're trying to um, like complete all those projects, but you know, you're losing uh, time by switching and reconcentrating. Okay, that's a wonderful introduction about your book. I need to read that (laughs) pretty soon. And uh, the fourth question is we're going to switch a bit to a different topic. And uh, that would be, since I mostly talk about modern day dating, how a lot of people have extremely difficult troubles with that. I'm just going to ask you, what are your experience with uh, modern day ladies? Wow, that question is a very open question and lots of things right now coming into my mind. Uh, but I'll try to be more uh, structured in my response. So from my experience, um, I had good and bad experiences, but I found that depending like who you're dating, uh, it's different. For example, it depends um, like from their background, the families they were raised in, mm-hmm. Uh, their cultural values in the family, um, where they're from, for example, and, of course, their childhood traumas. It oh. really plays a huge role, like, on the way, on their behavior and how they react on your behavior towards them. And, you know, people are different. You know, maybe you heard about five uh, love languages, I believe I've heard, I heard of that, but I don't remember them. So there's like five uh, love languages, and usually people have one primary life, uh, love language and secondary love language. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, first, it's like words of affirmation. Uh, second is receiving gifts, uh, act of service, uh, quality time. Oh, right. Quality time. Um, and there should be fifth one. Uh, I'm not sure. But for example, each person, they have to for uh, and physical touch. Physical right. touch. Is I, rem- I remember yeah. those. I remember those yeah. uh, now. For example, for me, quality time is super important. And uh, when you find a person who also values the same love languages, like it's easier to find a common language with them. 
And returning back to your question, all that plays a huge role. And also one more thing that affects modern dating is dating apps. There's so much choice and people sometimes lack like accountability and responsibility because they know they don't have to put their best. They don't have to invest. Yeah. They can always just go on a dating app and just find somebody else and restart the relationship. Yeah, very true. Do you think in modern days, looking, I heard this like swimming over the internet everywhere that a lot of guys today prefer what's called tradwife, basically traditional ladies over what's the other name I would believe is uh, modern women. So do you think that uh, most guys prefer tradwives today? Uh, I will ask you uh, one question. Can you please define tradwife in your opinion? Tradwife, in my opinion, is basically a lady who's very feminine, mm -hmm. who is, I think submissive is the other word for it, who likes um, to mostly work at home. And <laughs> another thing that I keep hearing from other guys is cooking, apparently. <laughs> okay. I think that nice. it's like one of the most important things for them. I don't really know why, but that's just what I keep hearing. Okay. Uh, thank you for the explanation. So when I was younger, I preferred trad wives, like 100% trad wives. For example, uh, wives sitting at home, cooking, taking care of the family and the kids. But now I realize with like modern economy, feminism, uh, and it's a little bit harder to actually make it a reality. Even if you're going to find a trad wife, are you sure uh, you can support her completely uh, with only one income? Yeah. Probably not, because nowadays women and men pretty much receive the same like equal salary. Uh, and it doesn't make sense for only one adult in the family to work and make the income. So it's if we're realistic, it's better to have both adults working in the family and both of them share the everyday task, for example, cooking, laundry, washing dishes, taking kids to school, for example. Uh, and only in this way, it's possible to create some sort of um, security also, you know, if we have only one adult working in the family and that adult gets sick, who's going to take care of the kids and like who's going to bring money home? If yeah. like wife never had an experience working, um, she won't be able to find a good job and make money to support everyone. Mm, so it's going to be a total failure. And it's really bad, not only for the family in general, but especially for the kids. Well, thank you.